One of the things that I love in my life is personal growth and development to uh, set a course for the future and try to grow in my relationships with people and challenges that I face. Not only in my relationship with Jesus Christ, but also in my relationship with others. And someone who is an expert in that field that I really do admire is our guest, Andrew Blackwood. Andrew, welcome. You are a coach. Uh, you are a, um, uh, someone who comes along and helps families and individuals with right. counseling and personal crises and challenges to help uh, get some of the rough edges smoothed off in life. Do my best. Yeah, and yeah. We're, we're grateful for your friendship and grateful when you can bring us uh, perspectives on the family, such as the reason you're here today. So let's talk about this phenomenon now called snow plow parenting. Right. What in the world? <laughs> well, you know, again, the imagery is powerful. Yeah. You think about a <laughs> snow plow coming through and moving everything out of the way, making it easier for people to kind of have access to things. And right. similarly, parents with good intentions try to do that. But there is a problem with that if done to excess or inappropriately. Talk to us about that. Well, we in the world of family therapy know it as overfunctioning. And simply put, when a parent does too much, does more than they ought to, then their child has no choice but to underfunction. And therefore not really prepared for life's realities that are ahead. Right. Missing out on the development of a number of skills, um, planning organization, prioritization, seeing how to handle life skills, failure, right, life skills, right. essential life skills. So uh, what happens when that uh, young person is in that home and they are still having mom and dad making key decisions in their lives as they get into 16, 17, 18, 19? Obviously you want parents to advise and counsel and it's proper to be involved, but what happens if it's too much and they find themselves ready to go to college or university? Well, so many things happen. Um, they find themselves ill-equipped to face things. So then that can bring on other things, other coping mechanisms, or, you know, it might even be, you know, the idea like, you know, I have to succeed at all costs. Now the pressure's on me. Mm -hmm. So that might lead to cheating. It might lead to other things. Then we get into values. Precisely. Right. Um, when those are the things that we want to teach earlier on, um, when children encounter difficulties and challenges, those are the opportunities to is teach a, them those values. Is an over-involved parent uh, trying to overcompensate for something that's lacking in their own lives? Often that is the case. Sometimes it might be as a result of their own family history and experiences that they've had. Sometimes it's just an undercurrent of anxiety, right? But what people don't realize is that whole dynamic harbors this idea that my child is unable to do it, so I have to do it for them. So even though they're trying to help their child, they're con communicating that you can't do it. Uh, I have a friend, Tim Elmore, was on the program recently. He told me that uh, he heard the story from a university professor to whom this happened. Uh, this university professor passed out the results of a test mm -hmm. that uh, the whole class had taken, major university and I think in the northeastern U.S. And um, this girl uh, looked at her, uh, her results and picked up her cell phone in the class and called her mother and said to the professor, my mother wants to talk to you. <laughs> How about that? Right. It's out of control. Yeah. Yeah. And that, 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 that kind... How much does social media play into it today at all? Is there any, you know, is a, instead of a kid having the opportunity to really face difficult challenges and help develop them so that they can make decisions, they fall back on social, social media. Is that a reality that the, the, the kids are facing while the parents are trying to control? Well, you know, I think something that social media communicates is the idea that everything works out all the time and you have to win at all costs. When in reality, there is this thing called failure. And that failure is actually an opportunity for us to step back, to recalibrate, to look, to see, okay, what have I learned from this situation and how can I move forward? Yeah. I'm a new grandparent. Lots of people that watch the program know that and, and uh, I love to share about my, my granddaughter. Tell me what my son and daughter-in-law need to do with this six-month-old baby they have. When do we start seeing the the uh, principles you're talking about, allowing a child moving into school years uh, to begin to make some decisions while okay. understanding the parents' and ro role and involvement for wisdom and counsel. It's a beautiful question, and because you highlight, you know, at six months, 
the developmental needs and, and skills are very different than yeah. six years and yeah. 16 years. Yeah. But it's never too early to start to recognize traits and values in your child and to instill those. So I encourage parents, even at six months, to acknowledge what they see in their child and to affirm that. And when your child gets a little bit older, you kind of watch your role change over time. Mm -hmm. So part of teaching is doing. And there, and, and there is a big difference between teaching and controlling. Exactly. You know, we think of Jesus and uh, what he did is he took, when he equipped his disciples, he first took them with him. Right. And he showed them. And then they came back and they talked about it. And then he would take them out the next time and let them do it with right. him. Right. They would come back and talk about it. And then the next time he would send them out all by themselves. That's part of this maturation process. Exactly, it's a graduation of stages. And when you look at the roles that parents play, it's not just one role, I'm not just a parent. At times, I'm a teacher. At times, I'm an encourager. At times, I'm an advocator, right? So your role is gonna change over time, but it's also gonna depend on the scenario. I consider my son a close friend, mm -hmm. but when he was in these developmental years, uh, I used to say to him, you know, I love you, uh, I'm your dad, I'm your coach, I'm an encourager, I'm not your best buddy and pal. That's not my desire. One day we will be best buddies and pals, but right now my desire right. is to prepare you for life. It breaks my heart sometimes to watch people who have gone, bright kids who go through university, who get the degree, they even do well in the job interview. Mm -hmm. But when they get into the workplace, they're just not equipped for the challenges that are there, working with other people, learning how to negotiate, learning how to you know, uh, give back and forth and try to reach some type of agreement so that an organization or an office can move forward. Precisely. That's why I encourage parents to have a list of questions that they ask themselves. What am I teaching my child in this moment, in this scenario? What are they learning about themselves? What are they learning about life? And that will help you dictate or inform your choice about what role you choose to play. Well, here you... you here, here's a question that uh, we had in preparation. Am, am, I try, am I, as a parent, trying to avoid my own fears? Uh, am I really protecting myself? So let's talk to parents out there who, who may be on the journey and they're looking at their lives and uh, they've not ever even thought about the fact that maybe there's something going on in their own lives, mm. in their own childhood that they haven't dealt with. And that gets into deeper issues, but it really is important because it is impacting the next generation. It certainly does. And, and sometimes when you take a step back, and I have the privilege of doing that with people, and I look back one generation or two generations, right. and sometimes you see similar patterns that happen. Sure. So it's, aware, it's good to be aware of those patterns, and then you can be more intentional about how do I go about avoiding that or doing something different. Yeah, so uh, a last word with just a few seconds left to snowplow parents to reevaluate their journey, their well, strategy. You know what? One thing I encourage parents to do is help their child to consider options. Before you jump in and rescue your child in a situation, you want to assess the situation. Are they in danger physically, right? Then by all means, sure. intervene. If right. not, Give them the room to think about what options do you have? How do you want to address this situation? What's the best outcome? And what do you need from me? Mm. Asking them is often very helpful. And then you get to decide, okay, well, if I do this, what is my child going to learn? So asking questions of yourself, asking questions of your child or teen, essential. Andrew, we're always grateful to have you on the show, especially today on Family Day. You always seem to bring a realignment back to a family life where there are always always challenges. Sometimes come back and uh, we'll talk more about uh, how to care for elderly parents, which is something we're going through in my family right now. Certainly. Great to have you with us. Love to be here. Well, Andrew Blackwood is our guest and uh, you can uh, find out more about him by visiting his website. It's there on the, on the screen. And uh, I hope that if you want to get engaged in personal growth and development, equipping, uh, family coaching, helping you as an individual, helping you as a marital couple, that you will uh, be a part of his world and you'll inquire more. He always adds value to our program. He'll add value to your life. Thank you again. My pleasure, John.